All right, so welcome back. Here we have another rhythm. Okay, so name the following rhythm. Choose the best answer. So our choices here are first degree AV block, second degree AV block, Mobitz type one or Winky Bach. Uh, C is second degree AV block, Mobitz type two, or D, an idioventricular rhythm. All right, so let's go through these here. So just to reorient yourself, now we have two leads present here. We have lead two and lead V1. So lead two, remember, is an inferior limb lead, and V1, a right precordial lead, okay? <clears throat> now these are normally the best leads to get a good view of those P waves, okay? So again, they're a little hard to make out the P waves here, but they are there, and let's just point them out. So here's one, there's one, okay? And you can see these throughout, all right? This right here is a T wave. How did I know that? Remember, there's a temporal relationship with um, different intervals and different waves and segments on the ECG. So anything happening above or below is happening at the same time. Remember, time on the ECG goes from left to right. All right, so this is all happening at the same time. And that's why this QRS complex happens at the same time, okay? All right, so let's look at each one of these. So we have a few different types of blocks we'll look at, and then there's one that sticks out, the idioventricular rhythm. So let's tackle that one first, okay? So remember, this is a standard 12 lead ECG, and this is just that enlarged portion of the above to see those smaller boxes. So idioventricular rhythm, all right? What do you have to know about this? Well, normally the rate of any, so what this is, is a rhythm originating within the ventricles, okay? And that means the rate is often between 20 and 40 beats per minute, okay, so you slow rate, and the QRS complexes, the ventricular depolarization complexes, will be wide, okay? That means at least 120 milliseconds in duration. So let's look at that here. Our QRS complexes, if you look down here, <clears throat> from here to here, are not beyond that three small boxes, okay? So these are normal QRS complexes, not wide, and in fact, the rate does not fall in that uh, in that range. So let's find the rate here. Remember, the beginning all the way to the end of our standard ECG is 10 seconds. Okay, so with <coughs> excuse me, just getting over a cold here. So um, and with the idioventricular rhythm, these QRS complexes, if we count them, we said 10 seconds times six is 60 seconds. And then if we count the complexes multiplied by six, we can get an estimate of the rate in beats per minute. So we said one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? Seven times six is 42. So maybe just beyond that range of 40. But the other thing you should note here is that our QRS complexes are uh, narrow. <clears throat> now, you can have some AV dissociation and have P waves here, but normally with any idioventricular rhythm, there are no P waves, okay? So clearly we found some ways that D is not the correct answer. How about the others? Well, let's look at the first degree AV block. Remember, this is when our PR interval is prolonged. So PR interval greater than or equal to 200 milliseconds or five small boxes or one of the big boxes. So from beginning here all the way to there, that's 200 milliseconds. So if the PR interval is beyond that, we consider it prolonged, right? Just to draw out our complexes here, this is a P wave, QRS complex, and actually an RS complex, because there's an R and S wave, no Q wave. This is a T wave, okay? When we look at our PR interval, we're pretty much looking from here to here. That is the PR interval, okay? Then this portion here is the PR segment. So PR interval is that. So just to draw that out, from this portion to this portion. PR, okay, if there's a Q wave that starts the QS complex, you may hear it as a PQ interval. All right, either way, PR interval just is generally what we use. So anyways, if that is prolonged, okay, that is more than 200 milliseconds, then we consider that a first degree AV block if you have constantly prolonged PR interval, okay? So the PR interval, say, is 234 milliseconds, constantly prolonged with no drop beats, okay? Um, so no dropped beats, okay, so that's that. What? Well, what we can see here is that we pointed out some P waves, and then we have no beat that's coming between, and then a P wave. So we know for sure that first degree AV block is not correct, okay? There are dropped beats, and we said that 
there are no drop beats in first degree if you block. So it's got to be one of the uh, two choices, two, one of the two second degree AP blocks, move it's one or two. Okay, so B or C here. Now let's go over these. Second degree AP block, move it's one, is when your PR interval gets longer, 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 and then drops. There's a dropped beat, and then you got a PR interval, longer, 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 drop. Okay, it doesn't always have to have that pattern, but that's what you tend to see. The main thing you're looking for is that this PR interval that follows the drop beat is shorter that, than that one that comes before it, okay? So if you look here, notice this is a P wave right here, okay? And then there's our PR interval. Notice that it's clearly beyond that 200 milliseconds, okay? So meeting that first degree AV block range, but then notice the next one is even longer, okay? And then we have a P wave here, followed by no complex that shows up, and then a P wave that follows there, okay? What you'll notice is that this right here, so we'll call this A, and then this interval B, A interval is less than B, okay? So if you were to measure that out, you'd see that it's slightly less than that, all right? And in that case, that is what we consider a second degree AV block Mobitz type one. So we have a interval that's getting longer, longer, then a drop beat, and then a shorter PR interval, and then we'll see what follows, okay? So if you look here, here's another example. Here's our P wave, gets longer, and then here's our P wave and a drop beat, and then a PR interval that follows, and this one here is shorter than this one. So if this was A in this case, this is B, the PR interval in A is less than B. Okay, and that's what we want to kind of help confirm that. And then again, you're seeing that here. So maybe there would be a drop beat that if we had a longer uh, ECG uh, rhythm strip, we would see that. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So what we're showing is that B is the correct answer, but what is C? So second degree AV block uh, Mobitz type two. This is when you have a PR interval that is has just, it's just constant, so it has a constant duration. And then you have these dropped beats, okay? And these dropped beats can pretty much occur at random points. So you can have, it could be prolonged or not, but you have a P wave, here's a QRS complex and a T wave, and then a P wave, QRS complex, T wave, and then a P wave dropped beat, not occurring there, P wave, then it just continues, okay? But notice that if we were to measure these accurately, this one and this one have the same intervals between. So all of these here, if we were to say, this is A's PR interval, this is B's and C, the PR interval within each are all the same, okay? And then you just have a randomly dropped beat, okay? So dropped beats also occur here, but remember, not in first degree AV block. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So Mobus type two is not correct. Okay, and remember, when you're thinking second degree AV block, Mobus type one, you can remember it is longer, longer, longer drop. That's a sign of Winky Bach, okay? Because again, Mobus type one is also referred to as Winky Bach pattern, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. So the best choice here is second degree AV block, Mobus type one or Winky Bach. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something.